Acts chapter 3. to be taking up in the 13th verse. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed Prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are no witnesses. And his name through faith, in and his name through faith, in his name hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him the perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before hath showed by the mouth of the prophets, that Christ should suffer, and he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, <clears throat> that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which was before, which before was preached unto you, whom heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye bear and all excuse me him shall ye hear in all things and whatsoever he shall say unto you and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people yea and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these things. Ye are the children of the prophets, and the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying in Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the hindrance of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Let us pray. We thank thee, our Heavenly Father, for this great Savior, for thy Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. We plead thy great salvation, thy great mercy that endures forever, and thy Spirit's quickening and guiding. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts. Help us to perceive the truths of thy word. Help us to understand them. Forgive us of our sins against thee. Guide us in our endeavors to serve thee and worship thee in spirit and in truth. We pray for our country that you have mercy upon. We pray for peace in Israel. We pray that kingdom come. Guide us now in morning service. Help us to see Christ. Help us to exalt the name of Christ above every name. For it's in his name through the power of the Holy Spirit we ask. And amen. As history has shown... The Jews have fallen victim to many a murderer since the time of this. Spain, Rome, Germany butchered the Jews. But of course we know they asked for his blood to be upon them. Over in the Gospel of Mark, the 15th chapter, the 6th verse, Mark chapter 15, verse 6. Now at the, that feast he released into one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. This was at the mock trial of Christ. 
And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection, with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. He was a murderer. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that, that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said unto them, What will ye then that I do unto him whom ye, ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. They got their wish. Perhaps you remember some years back we made mention of Brother Kelly Henson said what he saw when he looked at the trial of Christ and the crucifixion and the death upon the cross, he sees Barabbas in that mirror. So do I. We were not worthy of getting off free, worthy of God's wrath. Our sins sent Christ to the cross. We are the Barabbas. Barabbas means son of the father. We deserve to be on that cross. Barabbas deserved to be on that cross, but he was set free. Actually, he was in a better position in some ways than the repentant thief who was with Christ that day in paradise. Barabbas had to go on and finish living out the rest of his life, and we hear nothing from him. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. <clears throat> but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. The world looks at people from a glamorous standpoint, how good does this person look? We look pretty rough. We look like Barabbas, the sinner getting all free. We read in the book of James, this first chapter. <clears throat> Perhaps who puts it best? James chapter 1, verse 22. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he behold that's a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, straightway forgetting what manner of man he was. That's the way we are. We see what we want to see. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. I guess are we doers or sayers? If we're honest with ourselves, this is kind of the way we are. We see Barabbas. Now there's an old saying, Scott free. That's the way Brabus got off. Scott Free. Now Scott Free was an you know, old comes from an actual event in Great Britain of old. Two men, one with the last name Hare and the other Burke, had committed a series of murders. They were killing people and taking their bodies and selling them. Burke was hanged for the his involvement. And Hare got off scot-free. The word scot-free was, in that day and age, when you had a pint of ale at the local bar, you had to pay the scotch tax, or the scot tax, they call it. And if you didn't pay it, you got off scot-free. We got off free indeed. The world loves its own. Barabbas was the typical worldling. 
theft, murder. The world loves its own. Whatever happened to the man, as I said, there's no, no telling. And that's even fitting because many people get off free and get by with it. Many don't. There's biblical characters that we don't know their fate. Just like this man, Brother Abbas. We read about in the second book of Kings one man named Naaman. Great warrior. Now he wasn't even an enemy of Israel. But he brought about for the Syrian army a great victory against Israel. <clears throat> Why should he have been cheered? Because God was fighting against Israel also. Second Kings chapter 5. Verse 18. <clears throat> this is the man Naaman. Now Naaman had gained a great victory for his master. And in that victory he had stolen and kidnapped a little Jewish girl and brought her to his wife from a worker. But anyway, that little Jewish girl knew who the prophet of Israel was. It was Elisha. Verse 3 of 2 Kings chapter 5, And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. King Na Naaman was a leper. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid, that is the land of Israel. And long story short, this man was healed of his leprosy over this one little girl, one little Jewish girl that was kidnapped, taken out of her native home. This is what God expects out of his people. Glory to his name. And that's what, what happened. God was glorified. Naaman was healed. Judges chapter 11. The book of Judges back after the old Pentateuch. Judges chapter 11. Verse 39. <clears throat> Jephthah's daughter. Jephthah went off to battle. Promised the first thing he'd come forth. If he won the battle, he would sacrifice the first thing that come forth out of his house. He didn't need to make that statement. That's just, that's man. We let our mouth overload us sometimes. Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt beget or shall without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over the children of Ammon to fight against him, and the Lord delivered them into his hand, and he smote them from Aurora, even till thou comest to the seas of Mineth, even twenty cities, and to the plain of the vineyards, with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel, and Jephthah came to Mizpah to his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he ran his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. And thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. We're not told exactly how it happened. We're not told exactly what happened in Naaman. Naaman made that inquisition. 
when I go to the house of my master's God, have mercy upon me. He was told to go in peace. We're not told about Barabbas, as I mentioned earlier. We're not told if Saul was saved. He went seeking a witch counsel and endured. Even though the prophet Samuel said that he would, he, Saul and his sons would be with him, which I figure was in paradise. Adam and Eve, were they lost or saved? We don't know. At Calvary, Christ took our place. And if you look at Scripture, it tells about one's deeds, great or bad. But it does not always, in most cases, it does not tell about the final judgment. We're simply not told. At Calvary, as I said, Christ took our place positionally in a light figure. He died the death that we should have died. Set for First Peter chapter three twenty one. And it should have been us on the cross. First Peter three and twenty one. The life figure wherein even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and power being made subject to him. We read about his glory. We haven't seen it yet with our eyes, only by the eyes of faith. We don't even know about ourselves. A lot of people believe that they have no repentance. We repent and believe. You can't truly believe until you first repented. And people will argue that point. You must repent. You cannot believe until you repent. That passage there in the second book of Acts. Verse 38, And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. This is a passage that the Church of Christ uses, saying water baptism, because it questions the word ice, which is in the Greek, a definite article, and on and on. If you repent first, it all falls into place perfectly. Romans 8 and 16, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Does that? That's simple. Did not Christ in the body, both literally and physically, take the place of Barabbas? This is a great point about our redemption. His death was reckoned as mine. Christ was crucified between two thieves. One he was with paradise, within paradise, and the other went to torment. That's the only thing we can figure out. Luke's Gospel, the twenty-third chapter, the thirty-ninth verse. And one of the male factors which was hanged railed on him, saying, "If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us." But the other answering him rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same con condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we received the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. <clears throat> and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. What was any different between him and the other one? Nothing but the fact that he changed his mind. He couldn't do anything else. <clears throat> he repented. He was against him earlier, but now something's changed.
Something has changed. The law said release. Luke chapter 23, 35. <clears throat> and the people stood beholding and the rulers also with him derided him saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. They didn't see that he couldn't save himself and save others. Save others. Oh, this seemed unjust. Well, it was unjust to Christ, but it's God's plan. Galatians chapter three twenty one. <clears throat> is the law then against the promises of God God forbid they did not see the, the, the Calvary a few of the prophets did the just dying for the unjust that wasn't what they saw they, they looked at the fact that they was taking a lamb that justified them. No, the lamb taking their place and bearing God's wrath. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. As it's been said, strictly speaking, God does not forgive sinners. Either the sinners pays for it or the sinners substitutes pay for it. The law... If there had been a law which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture saith, hath God hath concluded all under sin. Scripture hath, hath concluded all under sin, that the promise of faith or by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up into the old faith which should afterwards be revealed. It is mentioned often that in the Exodus, the first thing that the children do are they're brought by the law. They brought to Mount Sinai. We're brought to the law. This is God's demands. We don't keep them. Of course, God knew we wouldn't keep them. We're supposed to keep them. We're not given a free dismissal of them. The custom was unjust because Barabbas got away scot-free. The innocent, the lamb, died in the place Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. The innocent lamb died in the sinner's place. Ezekiel 18, 4. I read so many of these things that have Old Testament connotations. The world will tell you, just don't even worry about the Old Testament. Let me tell you something. There's more in the Old Testament about prophecy than in the New, perhaps. Ezekiel 18 and 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth it shall die. But if a, a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, and it talks about as not oppressed any, has not eaten upon the mountains, which is idol worship, open his eyes to idols, has not spoiled or stole, covered the naked there with their own garments. Verse 9, he walketh in my statutes and keep my kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just and shall truly live, saith the Lord God. If he begat a son that is a robber or a shedder of blood, he goes on to talk about the father shall not pay for the son, the son shall not pay for the, the father. The soul that sinneth it shall die. 
It goes on to say in verse 23, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? The only person who will get any glory out of a sinner dying is the Lord said, you could easily say unto them, I was ready to save, they rejected me. Simple as that. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the inequity of the father, neither shall the father bear the inequity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins he hath committed, and keep my statutes, and do that which is rightful, lawful and right, he shall surely live and shall not die. Now, I'm not an Arminian, but when we present the gospel, should be from that standpoint. Turn from your sins. Let not inequity be your ruin. Ezekiel says in another place. Man is accountable. The problem is he's dead and unable. Simple as that. You have he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. He quickened. It begins and ends with God. As getting back to Barabbas means son of the father, son of the master. More like a title than its name. It's also been said by scholars that this man's full name was Jesus Barabbas. So then the choice was Jesus who is called a thief or a murderer versus Jesus who is called the Christ, the Messiah. Like father, like offspring. The insurrection points to rebellion. That's the state that this man Barabbas was in. He was a rebel. Is that not what man turned into in the garden? A rebel against God? Man was put there needing nothing. Had everything he needed and rebelled against the Almighty's word. Simple as one little sin. We know what caused, what trouble it caused. As to a murderer, the same as hatred for a brother, we're told in the Beatitudes. If you hate a brother, you're as guilty of murder. Theft, which has its roots in covetousness. Like Barabbas, he was a thief. Well, that's why he was there. That's why he killed. Breaks all the laws is what I'm telling you. That's us. Barabbas, the world would call him lucky. That God is just and in judgment, things will take a whole new, different life. Everyone's fate and there, there, there is a fate for each of us a, eternal bearing eternal condemnations we don't know everyone's faith, fate we don't know everyone's spiritual standing before God we know that I have not seen ear hath not heard what the, last, what the Lord has prepared for them that love him we know these things are coming. The Jude, book of Jude, verse 14 to 15. Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. And we know that there wouldn't have been ten thousand at the time of Enoch. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurs, complainers, walking after their own lust and their own mouth, speaking great swelling words, having persons in, in admiration because of their advantage. 
But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. That is ever true. Barabbas is a good figure, good, good example of what we are. Should humble us. I mean, there in the book of Jude, the way it closes, as it keeps saying, salvation is all of the Lord, none of man. talks about verse 21 keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into life how you keep yourself in the love of God obey his word obey his gospel and if some have compassion making a difference and others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment is spotless spotted by the flesh you can look at this it's like Two different types of preachers. One tells you what you will receive in heaven, the good. One tells you the other side of the spectrum, what you'll get if you don't obey the gospel, which is God's wrath. In conclusion, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we now be made the righteousness of God in him. Think about the cost that is involved. To reject it? Mm -hmm. People looks at the indifference of other people and say, well, they wasn't hurting anything. For one, to reject the free gift. Uh, indeed, man is accountable, but dead and unable. As the saying goes, you'd rather err on the side of right than on the side of wrong. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. His death was reckoned as mine. What will be our fate? Are we going to be like Barabbas? Yes, we are like Barabbas. But more better yet, the two thieves. Now, nobody likes to be called a thief. But we all are. Do we tithe off the herbs of the field? We're supposed to. Christ made mention of in the Gospel of Matthew. This you where they tithe the herbs of the field, this you should have done, and let, not, not let that other undone. That's what they were supposed to do. They tithe the, on the mint and the cumin. They, the matters of equity, they did not take care of properly. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of men and anus and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. Are we right on judgment, mercy, and faith? Do we tithe on the herbs of the field? That's, if you don't do that, you're a thief. I mean, we tithe, we put money in the box. They also had other tithes. They paid about 30% in tithe. You'll find that you're a thief. It, uh, I'm talking about man positionally before God. Man before man's a different story. But 
What about a tenth of our time? Do we get it? No. Do we pray like we should? No. We, we all know these things are so. Barabbas is a good picture of us. We are angered when things don't go our way. We walk away scot-free. Scot-free and Barabbas. This is about the time of the year that the Lord's paying our what we the ransom we owe. But this year I noticed Easter of course was last week. Passover's in two weeks. It's very far off and that's the first time I've seen it this far apart. The Lord's coming draweth nigh. We all know we're waiting for sounds, not looking for signs anymore. What's going to be your faith? Examine yourselves daily. That's what Scripture tells us to do. That when the Son of Man returneth, we may open the door unto him quickly. But as far as the the wicked, like I say, you had the two thieves, which I get think in one sense the better illustration. The unrepentant thief. He went to the other place. While as the repentant thief was with Christ in paradise. Paradise sounds a lot better to me than torment. Let us stand and we'll sing.